Earlier, a guy brought in a black powder peg leg gun that he says is from the early 1800s. Corey thinks it's some kind of movie prop, but I'm hoping it's legit. So I brought in my buddy Alex to help me out with this thing. I mean, I'm looking at this thing, and frankly, I'm stumped. <laughs> We have the Swiss Army knife of pirate legs. Oh, I mean, intrigued is an understatement. Let me see this thing. So this is a peg leg with a gun in it. Wow. Look at this thing. I have never seen anything like a peg leg with a flintlock in it, ever. This thing is insane. So want me to tell you if I think this is real? Yeah, I just can't yeah. see this being a viable option for somebody. All right, well, here's what I know. The lock, it's got the crown GR for King George. King George died in 1820, so that's period for sure. But that cloth on there is... Yeah, well, that's a machine stitch all yeah. the way across. Huh. Ah, man, this is tough. So is it real? Well, I don't think it's a movie prop. I think it's much too sophisticated for it. I mean, it looks like it would function. Nice. Right? Nice. Sweet. Here's the thing, this barrel is rifled. So if I was gonna make a movie prop, why would I bother putting a rifle barrel in it? Rifling is a twist that's grooved into the inside of the barrel, and what it does is it takes a pistol ball and it spins it, sort of like a football spins on a spiral and goes straighter. So if you're gonna make a movie prop, why use a rifle barrel? Just use an old piece of pipe. What would happen is if this was a British officer's leg, and he was injured in battle, you're out to sea for months. Maybe the ship's carpenter made this, and they used recycled materials from products that they had on the ship. <laughs> wow, these are um, pipes for the ramrod in a brown vest musket. It's kind of an ingenious design because, you know, if you had a pant on and the bottom of your pant came down to the ankle, you'd have no idea that there was a pistol in there. So if you're in the middle of a battle, you need only bring up your leg that far and boom. Awesome. Right? Awesome. Boom. You just pull this little lever and the pistol discharges. So he wants 15 grand for it. I can't answer that yet. You know, I gotta research it, and if it fires, that'll help the value a lot. Can you meet us at the range in the morning? Sure. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you tomorrow. Take care. If Alex wants to shoot it at the range, I think that will do nothing but help the value go up. I'm all for it. So we're on the shooting range to see if it actually fires. And if this thing is legit, I really want to buy it. What do we strap this to to shoot it? <laughs> His leg. <laughs> sort of like shooting like a handheld rocket. It's kind of big and cumbersome, but we'll see if it works. All right. I chose some targets, some cantaloupes, because this is a close range weapon. There's no way to aim this. You just sort of point in the general direction and pull the lever and hope for the best. Load up the leg. <laughs> I'm being conservative with this gun because I don't want an accident to happen. I'm using a little bit of powder and a smaller ball. Little pressure, less of an accident. Lots of pressure, big accident. So I'm going little. All right, here we go. You ready? All right. right through it. It fires. Yes. Now I've done my job and it's between Rick and the cell. Does anyone else want to fire it? Sure, I'll shoot it. <laughs> nice. You don't want to shoot it? No, not at all. Why not? Well, some sweaty pirate leg <laughs> was in there and I'm just not into it. So I'll let you go ahead and go. All right, Rick. All right. All right. Ready? Here we go. I got a flesh wound. I got a flesh wound. <laughs> it fires. It's legit. I want to get it for the right price. I really want this thing. It is really cool. It's one of those things I put in the shop. People will want to take pictures next to it. So what do you think it's worth? Well, <laughs> There's no other peg leg gun out there to compare it to, but it really works and it has an ingenious design. So <sighs> what crazy collector out there wouldn't want this? I, I would say probably somewhere in the twelve to $15,000 range. Awesome. It's pretty amazing, Rick. <laughs>
I've never seen something like this. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Good luck, Alex, Dennis. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, what would you take for it? I'm looking at 15. No, 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 no. There's, there's no money to be made. Come back at me. Eight grand. Ten. We go nine? This is a thing that looks great in the showcase. I think I might, might be able to find some crazy guy to give me a lot of money for it, but it's going to sit around for a long time. Call it nine and a half. Split the difference. 9,500? 9, you got a deal. It's one of the coolest things I've ever owned. Rick and Corey were laughing when I first came in here. I'm the one that's laughing now with a pocket full of money as I hop on my one leg out of here. It's one of the weirdest things we ever bought. Well, I know it's weird, but that's why it's so great. I mean, I'm just telling you, if you're 12 years old, would you think that was the coolest thing in the world? No. You're so lame. Mr. Brown and I got along famously. <laughs> why he tittled through a pass? I caught the ball myself. It's got a name engraved on it. How did you end up with this? Sounds so fun.